Hi everyone, so in this lesson we're going to focus on indicators of living standards and economic development. So previously we've looked at economic growth and GDP increases as well as gross national income uh, and, and what those uh, increases actually mean for the economy and the living standards. But now we're going to go far, far broader than that. Uh, we're going to look at various qualitative measurements within these areas. Okay, so just to understand the difference between economic growth and economic development, we're now also focusing on improvements in the economic, political and social well-being of the population. And some of these uh, areas can be difficult to actually quantify. Uh, perhaps less so with this Human Development Index, which is perhaps the easiest uh, one of these measurements to actually calculate. So the HDI is the most commonly used. And you'll be able to look up figures on uh, this very easily to see which countries perform well in terms of the HDI index and which countries perform poorly. Uh, now it's a composite measure this, uh, so it consists of three key measurement areas and that is firstly gross national income per capita, that is real gross national income per capita at purchasing power parity. A couple of things here, firstly it's GNI because of course that gross national income uh, factors in any incomes earned from overseas uh, land, labour, capital, etc. Um, those key sort of assets that may well be working or um, are owned overseas. Further to this, it's uh, a PPP because it factors in the cost of living within that uh, given economy. Number two, life expectancy. So life expectancy is uh, obviously far far more straightforward to actually quantify so that's not too challenging and then finally the years of schooling and this can be more difficult to actually measure and of course the authorities may actually have an incentive to actually perhaps manipulate some of these figures uh, okay so um, since 2010 however they have used as well a broader measurement and it's just worthwhile being aware of this uh, so if you do look up any HDI figures, uh, just take note as to whether it's the inequality ad adjusted HDI, uh, which as I said was introduced in 2010, or whether it's the standard measurement. Uh, this measurement of course just adjusts for uh, the negative impacts of uh, potential inequality. Okay, second measurement here is uh, the measure of economic welfare or MEW. Now this is a measure that adds the value of leisure time and the amount of unpaid work in an economy and subtracts the value of environmental damage that's actually, uh, uh, that actually occurs as a result of the increase in production and consumption that takes place within an economy. Uh, okay, so obviously within this area it becomes far more difficult to actually uh, ascribe values to particular areas here. So we can break down this uh, calculation to the measure of economic welfare equaling the GDP, the real GDP per capita of purchasing power parity once again, plus the value of leisure time, plus the value of unpaid work, minus the, uh, minus the environmental damage there. Uh, okay, so this helps to actually factor in that unpaid work. So for instance, uh, people that choose to actually raise children as opposed to work, well, the actual value uh, that they are providing to the economy in doing so is actually factored into this equation. So that's uh, another interesting measure. And finally, we've got the uh, multi-dimensional poverty index here. Now, there's three key categories that are covered with 10 indicators here. So this is the, our broadest measurement, perhaps. Uh, and those categories, really, uh, health, education and living standards. So certain similarities between the HDI, uh, but this multi-dimensional uh, poverty index goes far, far deeper because uh, it's, it's got those 10 different indicators that are used under those three categories. So it's a measure of poverty and deprivation in different nations. Uh, now our first uh, indicator here, very much under the health uh, banner, would be child mortality. And of course we see nutrition, years of schooling, so moving on to education. Uh, child school attendance, so how good that child school attendance is. 
provision of electricity, sanitation, quality of drinking water, type of floor as well that's actually used uh, in homes across the country and the type of cooking fuel um, and finally how much of um, the population actually owns assets and of what sort of value so you can see that this is very very broad um, and some of it will be quite problematic in terms of the actual calculation um, so it does perhaps pose some problems there but nevertheless it gives us a very very interesting means of actually determining which countries are um, or which countries do have the worst and subsequently yeah the most improvements in terms of uh, economic development okay right there we go hope that's useful thanks guys